Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mark Bruce with Fit Strength Performance. And if you want to jump higher, keep listening and keep watching. Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mark Bruce with Fit Strength Performance. If you want to jump higher, keep watching. If you're someone that wants to jump higher, what I'm going to suggest to you is very simple and very doable. And I'm going to give you the why before I tell you what you need to do. So why is it important for you to do what I'm going to suggest? It's because when we jump, we have to look at our body as a house, right? We don't build the house from the top down. We don't start with the roof. We don't go to the third floor. We don't, you know, from an apartment standpoint, you don't start with the roof and apartment. Then you got the first floor, second floor, or the fifth floor, fourth, third, second, first, you know, so on and so forth. Um, same thing with a car. You know, we're, we're not going to start by just, you know, putting on a trunk. You know, there's going to be a foundation to it. So in order for you to jump higher, what I'm going to say is you need to get out of your shoes. You need to do some athletic things outside of your shoes. It doesn't mean squat 500 pounds, you know, deadlift 400 pounds. It doesn't mean do some crazy plyometric exercises barefoot. It means spending 5, 10, or 15 minutes of a workout or at home strengthening your feet. So I have a few pairs of shoes for you, things that are in my household. Um, I don't have my basketball shoes with me, but they're very similar. So if we look at these three different shoe variations, you know, if you notice, you know, here's, um, here's a shoe, here's my wife's shoe, you know, notice two things, the narrow toe box and also the high arch. And if we look at one of my shoes, same thing, narrow toe box and still relatively high arch. And then we have a pair of shoes that I love wearing that uh, honestly, I may only wear these shoes ever again wide toe box, right? Look at the difference between the shoe, right? If we look at these shoes, look at the difference between the toe box. So this is that toe box. You know, if I put them on top of each other, right? You're gonna notice that, you know, you can't even see the black one anymore. And same thing, right? You're gonna be able to see more of the, the yellow one. And then look at the heel. There's very minimal heel, okay? And this goes in. So this heel is like, I don't, I don't even know the exact, it's a couple centimeters. This is almost a half inch. This is, you know, looking at almost like a half inch. So that means that with these shoes, your feet are never touching the ground. And if we think back to cavemen days, they didn't survive with shoes. Their feet just touched the ground and they figured it out. So if you take your shoes off, you're gonna strengthen the bottom of your feet. You're gonna develop appropriate receptors that's going to send signals up the chain. Because if your feet are dormant and those muscles aren't working, those, those receivers aren't working, well then there's gonna be a, com a compensatory pattern that's gonna develop, which is gonna mess up your gait, your jumping, your squatting, your performance, your sprinting. So this is why I say take your shoes off because you need to strengthen your feet. So when we look at some movements that I'll demonstrate, notice that the feet must do something in order for you to be successful in that athletic ability. So what am I talking about? So when, see, I'm barefoot right now, and if we just think of running and jumping, right? If I had shoes on, I'm still gonna do, right, the same thing. I'm still gonna walk. I'm still gonna sprint. And if you look at what my feet are doing, you know, let's say I'm gonna jump, right? If I jump, right, my heels are gonna suddenly come off the ground, meaning that the front of my foot, my forefoot, has to do something to maintain control so I can be an athlete. And if I go to sprint, right, if I sprint, if I'm coming at you, right, my heels are off the ground. And this is where you have to focus on what your feet are doing in order to figure out where do you need to go athletically. Because you see a lot of basketball players, you know, they go to squat, they go to jump, and they're, they're all here. And a lot of that's because their feet, their ankles, their, their hips are all, are all messed up because of those shoes that they consistently wear. Now, this isn't a, a brag on LeBron's or Kobe's and Seth's and stuff like that. You know, you need basketball shoes to be successful in basketball. You know, at the end of the day, I wouldn't say, hey, wear some low top cross trainers to play basketball. However, if you want to be a better basketball player, get out of your basketball shoes and wear something that's going to allow your feet to feel the ground. Um, because we see a lot of basketball players in this anterior tilted position. A lot of that is because there's such a high heel elevation. So if I'm someone that's always walking like this, my weight is always forward. So in order for me to counterbalance that, 
my hips have to shift back so I don't feel like I'm falling forward. So that's that counterbalance action. So if we're wearing high heels, that's gonna shorten your calves, restrict your ankles, and that's gonna most likely put you in that anterior pelvic tilt, which is going to eventually lead to back, knee, some foot Achilles discomfort. So that's why if you can learn how to, you know, improve your ankle mobility, strengthen your feet, teach your feet how to pronate, and then settle your hips, well, that'll reduce a lot of injury, but also help you be a better performer. You know, if you can get into pronation more effectively, you're gonna be faster, you're gonna be able to jump higher. So this is why I really say, take off your shoes and do some light jumping. Do some calf raises barefoot, slow and controlled. Feel your toes, feel your big toe. Because you notice with your shoes, people that wear really narrow shoes, right, you see the big toe start to curl under, curl over, and you get that kind of, you know, veered off to the, to the right or left look. That is going to disrupt your tibia. That's gonna disrupt your femur. That's gonna disrupt what your hips do, and then everything else. And that could lead to chronic knee pain. It could lead to a worse injury. So I really highlight, take your shoes off and spend time just doing some skipping, just doing some jumping, just doing some calf raises. Don't deadlift 500 pounds, but maybe you get a goblet, a light dumbbell, and you work on some squatting barefoot. That'll help strengthen your feet so you can improve on balance and improving on your appropriate receptors. Thanks for tuning in. Listen, I love shoes. I love basketball shoes. This isn't a knock on them. It just means don't spend 24 seven in the same footwear. Know what footwear is doing to your feet and then try to counteract that in order to improve your, your, improve your, um, your performance and find a little balance. Thanks for tuning in. Like, share, comment. If this helped you, it's gonna help someone else. So send it along so we can continue helping spreading the good word.